And so it was said, that if the pillars of the world shall fall, darkness will descend upon all that lives. From the Book of the Dark, man did not heed this warning. The sacred cosmic tree burned to cinder. And so the darkness came, claiming all that was bright and living in fear. When all hope was lost, after a century without light, the sun rose once more. Thea awakened from her dark slumber, and you along with her. But Thea is not the world that once was. The age of darkness weakens, but it is far from over. Life took its shy roots, yet death will not release its grip easily. While the sun keeps some of the evil in check during the fleeting days, at night, the creatures of darkness roam free and angry, unwilling to give up their dominion over the land. It is up to you to find a way to rebuild Thea, banish the darkness, and strengthen mankind.
Thea is awakened. Welcome. No time to waste. You are a deity of the High Pantheon, and you must help your worshippers survive the darkness. So what now, you ask? You are divine, yes, but you have little power, and so you will know the world through your people's eyes. This means sometimes you will encounter your own divine messengers, and maybe even face your own avatars. Weird, I know. Your first mission is to survive. Every critter is trying to make sure you stay down. So get food and craft better equipment to protect yourselves. You will guide your people to victory, either by sheer survival and progress, or by solving the Cosmic Tree's mystery. I am but a messenger. Theodore, you can call me. But let us focus on you. Thea is a broken land. The underworld is shut, and the undead roam the earth. And creatures of darkness that ruled for a century want you dead. First, go and explore your village. Check the inventory to see your stocks, and set people to gather food and fuel, like wood. Without food, people will starve. And without fuel, they will not craft or even heal, so these are really important. Yes, once you've visited your village, check out the people standing outside, the exploring party. Select your party and send them to me. I will wait for your people outside the village. I have marked your people's map with a big blue question mark so they will see where I am. Oh, and if you ever forget what your current task is, just check out your logbook.
welcomes you. Well, hello there. I see you're finding your feet and making first steps into the world. Well done. Events, such as meeting me, will occur throughout your adventures. Sometimes they are random, sometimes predestined, and always varied. Events can occur when you're out exploring, but also globally, or within your village. So remember, leaving your settlement unattended may be dangerous. Many events will ask you to bring stuff or do things in order to move to the next stage. I asked you before to gather food and fuel in your village. So, you can gather resources in your village, but also by setting up a camp when you're out exploring. To set up camp, stand on an empty hex and choose the tent icon from the mini hut. Good. Now events can lead to conversations or just random disasters, but they can also lead to challenges. To show you what I mean, track down a pack of boars nearby, marked by a blue question mark, and Bring me back their bones. You find the boars Theodore told you about. There is only a couple, so it should not be too hard. However, instead of a straight fight, you can try to do a proper hunt. If you have the right skills, that is. Or better yet, you can go all native on these beasties and wrestle them to the ground. Not an easy option, that one. Great. You have the right skill, in this case gathering, to enter into an alternate challenge. In non-fight challenges, the wounds you get during the challenge do not carry over after it finishes, meaning you have less of a risk of dying. You stalked the boars like a pro and caught them unaware. Your loot may not be as plentiful as a straight fight, but you did not risk getting wounds, so your people will not have the danger of dying now.
welcomes you. Well, hello there. I see you're finding your feet and making first steps into the world. Well, wonderful. Well done. And keep your resources. They may come in handy on a rainy day, you know. As you saw, you got both experience points and research points, on top of any material rewards. All of these will help you grow stronger. So, you've discovered that some events will let you solve a situation through more than combat. These non-combat challenges are often just as hard, but it means that fighting is not the only way. Remember, wounds from combat challenges can kill your people even after the fight, so choosing a different path is often safer. And having a medic in your party will help decrease the chances of dying as well. Anyway, great job on the boars! Sure. Firstly, you can always ask me for my tips again. Reset the tutorial in the help menu. But just to give you some of the core tips, initiative is randomly rolled at the start of each challenge, so you have no control over this. Your party is split into two hands, tactical and offensive, and again, this is done randomly. Cards attack their closest enemy on either side, and the round begins from left to right of the table. There are various skills and weapon types that give you special tactical and offensive capabilities. These are only a few pointers, so check out the help manual for more detailed information. Practice makes perfect, you know. So now that the boars are done for, let's practice one more challenge type. Social encounters. I spotted a fellow demon called Hurlick, and I want you to convince him to give you some gold. When you have it, bring it back here. Theodore is clearly up to his old tricks, sending you here for his gold. Here you go, and tell him to come himself next time.
small group of travellers passes by your village. You exchange basic supplies and talk. Because of your kindness, they tell you of a herbalist living in a solitary hut out in the wilderness. They say she can cure any poison and even heal wounds, for a price of course. They give you a map to the herbalist's hut and depart on their journey. You stumble across some ruins of an old city, engulfed in mist and mystery. You search the abandoned abodes and open some old dusty cellar. As the heavy doors crack, you are swarmed by some crazed bats.
search the buildings and discover a supplies store still intact. You go down to the fields to check if any crops survived this night, and you discover a large molehill on your way. A peculiar-looking mole carrying a small shovel pops up from the hill and exclaims, Ahoy! It seems really happy about something. The mole does not respond. It just stares at you, especially at your clothes for some reason. The creature disappears into the molehill. welcomes you. Well, hello there. I see you're finding your feet and making first steps into the world. Well, oh good, you got the gold. That wretched woman owes me, but I have no desire to speak to her. Anyway, it's a matter of principles rather than the gold itself, so just keep it. You may need it to craft better stuff, you know. In social challenges, as you saw, you will face your opponent, but different skill sets become relevant, such as speech, attractiveness, and will. So just remember, different challenges use different skills, and so your party composition can have a great impact on the way you explore the world. As you perhaps noticed, you got research points as well as XP. You need research points to discover new materials and recipes for crafting, and new buildings for your village. Now, you will 
notice that some equipment, as well as buildings in your village, require a lot of stuff, often things that are not easily gathered or commonly found. For such needs, I also recommend scouring the world map in search of old ruins, abandoned tunnels, ancient towers. You get the gist, right? It so happens that I know of an old dungeon that you can explore and loot. I have marked this place on your map. Well, yes, I have a second task for you to do at any time you're ready. Craft me ten cooked, baked or roasted food. Any type. You may want to research some varieties as well to match your supplies. Also, leave these ten crafted foods in the village until I show up. You don't have to rush with this one. Take your time and get to grips with managing your settlement. Remember to check the magical help button to read more. Yeah, I know, more about any mechanics.
two of your fellow villagers decided to get married, and since times are dire, it is more important than ever to cherish such occasions. Wedding celebrations last for seven days, and it is customary to make sure everyone takes part. In honor of the sun god, the couple begins the ceremony at high noon, when the sun is the strongest. Symbols of the sun god's grace are burned into the skin of the newlyweds, to show they are willing to endure anything for each other and for their god. Once the couple proves their physical devotion to their new union, they enter into a storytelling contest, where they have to tell a tale of their love and their deeds for as long as they can. This can sometimes last for days. The newlyweds are then blessed by Svarok. Only then do the usual libations with an excess of food, strong spirits and plenty of naked dancing through the night proceed and last for many nights. The wedding was deemed a great success, and the happy couple begins their new journey. After the wedding, the newlyweds are blessed with the arrival of the much-coveted offspring from the Cabbage Patch. You find the solitary hut of the herbalist. It is a small wooden abode with a straw roof and smoke coming out of the chimney. There is a distinct smell of herbs and medicines in the air. An elderly lady walks out from the house to greet you. Welcome, travellers. What brings you to my home? 
Yes, indeed I can, but I haven't survived as long as I have by running a charity. If you wish to be healed, you will do me a favour. Beware, for healing wounds I require food and wood as payment, as well as a favour. But I am warning you, even if you fail the favour, I still take the goods. Poisons are cheaper, I only require a favour. So, do you need to be cleansed of a poison or wounds? Oh, wouldn't you like to know, eh? Well, I am useful for one. What's the point of killing a healer? Better to have them help you and all that. But, of course, there may have been those who tried to force my hand. Let us just say that not everything is as it seems. I seem human to you, yet my mother was a Rafalka. Don't laugh, I was pretty once. Anyway, she didn't want me to live as a demon, so she left me with my pa, a good man, a herbalist himself. Together we lived here for years, and the spirit of my mother protects us. Well, only me now. Enough talk. Do you need healing from poison or wounds? You enter an underground complex that turns out to be some old, long-forgotten dungeon. You're not sure what used to be the purpose of these dungeons, but they seem large. Inside, there are two main tunnels leading deeper into the complex. You take a left and go down a long, winding corridor, with empty alcoves spread about in equal spaces. Each alcove hides a potential doorway to explore. You enter one such opening, and you arrive at a circular chamber with some kind of an altar in the middle, steeped in purple light from an unknown source. You find some old cobwebs and dust, but you find nothing of interest. You enter an underground complex that turns out to be some old, long-forgotten dungeon. Inside, there are two main tunnels leading you take the right turn and go down a wide corridor with many doors on both sides. You try one of the chambers, and you see it must have been some old jail, as there are many open cells with iron bars. Before you can explore more, you realize the bones of the convicts have risen and are attacking you.
were defeated.